Hello! This video tutorial gives an overview of the basic concepts of HDR audio and how to set it up in WISE. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. HDR audio is a dynamic mixing system that maps the naturally occurring very high dynamic range to a lower dynamic range more suited for game listening environments. Using HDR, you can assign volumes to WISE objects that are beyond the standard range of 96 decibels found in 16-bit audio systems. This extended range is eventually converted to standard volumes at the output of the HDR system. More on this later. The first concept to consider with HDR audio is that sounds prior to the HDR bus are assigned high volume values in a virtual mixing environment using an arbitrary decibel scale. On the output side of the HDR system, the volumes are then converted to standard volumes in dBFS. dBFS, which stands for dB full scale, is relative to the playback device where a signal of 0 dBFS represents the loudest signal that the device can handle before digital clipping occurs. Here's a scenario using four sounds identified by different colors, which illustrates how HDR audio works in WISE. At time 1, the blue sound is the loudest sound, which plays at plus 30 dB at the input of the HDR system, which is mapped to 0 dBFS on the output side. The purple and green sounds are 30 and 96 dB lower, which is also converted at the output. Note that the blue region in the graphs represents the HDR window. In this example, the window is rather large with 96 dB of virtual dynamic range. Most games will probably choose a smaller dynamic range, ranging from approximately 40 to 50 dB. Now, at time 2, the orange sound is the new loudest sound playing at plus 50 dB. Again, this sound is mapped to 0 dB on the output side. And the blue, purple and green sounds are scaled down proportionally. For example, the blue sound is now playing at minus 20 dB. Finally, at time 3, the orange sound stops playing and the blue sound becomes the loudest sound again with the same volume as in time 1. To summarize, in its simplest form, the HDR system selects the highest volume sound in the virtual world, which is pre-HDR bus, maps it to 0 dBFS, and then proportionally lowers all other sound volumes. As can be noticed in this scenario, the HDR system operates very much like an audio limiter effect. Furthermore, the fact that the loudest playing sound automatically ducks down the volume of the lower playing sounds, the listener is left with the impression that the loudest sound is indeed louder. To set up HDR in WISE, you need to activate at least one bus as an HDR bus. This bus will do the conversions between HDR virtual volumes and full-scale volumes. In a bus hierarchy, only the topmost bus needs to be flagged as HDR to affect all child audio and auxiliary buses contained below. It is possible to have parallel bus structures using HDR, but it is not possible to set HDR buses in series. To enable HDR on a bus, simply inspect the bus's HDR tab and select the Enable HDR checkbox. Now, all objects routed to this bus or any of its child buses will be affected by the HDR system. To work efficiently with HDR, we suggest that you customize a layout by removing unnecessary views and adding more relevant views for the task. At any moment, you can go back to the factory layouts by using the Reset Factory Layouts option in the Layouts menu. For this tutorial, we will be using the Voice Monitor view which is an essential view when working with HDR, as well as the Soundcaster and the Property Editor views. In the Voice Monitor view, select the HDR bus that you want to monitor and use the drop-down menu to toggle between input or output of the HDR bus. Finally, to monitor activity in the Voice Monitor view, you need to start a capture. The following is a simple scenario which uses a helicopter sound set to minus 10 dB and a gunshot sound set to plus 10 dB. 
They are both routed to the HDR bus, which is set with the default threshold setting of 0 dB. This means that the gunshot sound will raise the window by 10 dB, which will lower the helicopter sound by 10 dB. You may notice two things with this scenario. First, the helicopter volume jumps back quite abruptly at the end of the gunshot sound. This is normal with the current settings, and later in this tutorial, you will see how to solve this problem by using amplitude envelopes. Second, the volumes for the helicopter and gun in the voice monitor display minus 19.9 and 0.1 dB instead of minus 20 and 0 dB as expected. These rounding imprecisions are due to the fact that the HDR bus ratio is set to 100 to 1 and not infinite to 1. Before working with envelopes, we'll take some time to set a dynamic range for the system and look at HDR ballistics. As you can notice by the blue region of the input voice monitor, the project currently supports a dynamic range of 96 dB. Most projects will benefit in resource usage and by cleaning up the mix by lowering this dynamic range from 40 to 50 dB, if not less. To set the dynamic range of your project, Go to the project settings and change the volume threshold to minus 40 dB. Automatically, you'll now see the blue region of the input voice monitor now have a range of minus 40 dB to 0 dB. Now, let's have a look at the HDR settings for the bus. The threshold is the first parameter in the dynamics group box. It operates in the same fashion as any audio compressor or limiter effect by defining the input level above which the HDR window starts moving. Note that changing the threshold from its default value of 0 dB preserves the dynamic range set in the project settings. For example, lowering the threshold to minus 10 dB, the window bottom will now be set to minus 50 dB, preserving the total dynamic range of 40 dB. The following is a series of four examples showing the effect of the threshold setting for a given sound. The first example shows that a sound playing at minus 21 dB with the threshold set to 0 dB will output at the same volume. Setting the threshold to minus 12 dB for this sound will output at minus 9 dB. Setting the threshold to minus 24 dB, which is 3 dB below the voice input, will output at 0 dB. Finally, setting the sound volume to 0 dB with a threshold of minus 24 dB will also output at 0 dB. The ratio parameter works very much like what is found on standard audio compressor and limiter effects. The following shows three examples using different ratio settings and compares the volume input and output of two sounds. For the first example, a ratio of 100 to 1 gives an almost infinite ratio. Consequently, the volume of plus 24 dB will output at 0 dB, and a volume of 0 dB will output at minus 24 dB. With a ratio of 4 to 1, the sound at plus 24 will output at plus 6, and the sound at 0 will output at minus 18. Finally, with a ratio of 2 to 1, the sound at plus 24 will output at plus 12, and the sound at 0 will output at minus 12. Notice that the level difference of 24 dB between sound 1 and sound 2 is preserved across the three examples. Finally, the release time and release mode properties define how the HDR window recovers to a lower value when no sound is playing above the threshold. You can use the release time to reduce artifacts like pumping, for example. As we've seen in the first audio example, the HDR system works with logical volumes and by default is not aware of the actual amplitude variations of the input sounds as recorded in the audio files. That may be suitable for constant amplitude sounds like the helicopter loop we've heard, but for transient sounds like shotguns and explosions, it may create some unwanted behaviors. Let's play the first scenario again. As we can hear, 
there is a long gap during the gunshot decay where the helicopter is ducked down too much to sound natural. This happens because Wise is unaware of the gunshot's amplitude envelope. As we can see in this representation, the final output of Wise goes unusually low during the gun's decay. It is possible to fix this problem by enabling envelope tracking. In this case, Wise analyzes the amplitude envelope of the sound, which drives the volume of the sound at runtime. As you can see in this representation, the gun's decay no longer produces unnatural volume drops in the mix. To set amplitude envelopes, you need to select Enable Envelope in the HDR tab of an object. For this scenario, we've selected the gun sound. As soon as the checkbox is enabled, WISE analyzes in the background the actual amplitude over time for an audio file. Let's listen to the same scenario with the amplitude envelope activated on the gun sound. Clearly, we can see that the volume of the gun sound is not static anymore. We also hear that the helicopter ducking is now transparent. Looking at the output side, we can clearly see that the helicopter volume curve inversely follows the gun curve. A good hint that helps sometimes when mixing is to mute the loudest sound to only hear the ducking effect applied on the lower sounds. It is possible to modify the sensitivity of the amplitude envelope analysis by using the sensitivity fader. You can also preview the result of the analysis in the source editor view. Let's open the source editor view and double click on the gun sound to display the source audio file. When a sound has the envelope activated, it is automatically displayed in purple in the view. Clicking on the HDR button will display the points on the curve. Switching to RMS in the drop-down menu collapses all channels and displays the RMS amplitude of the source audio file. This is probably the best mode to use when editing amplitude envelopes. Now, modifying the sensitivity fader of the gun sound from the HDR tab will add or remove detected envelope points. A good practice for sensitivity is to keep just enough points to get a representative envelope but not more because each of the points are stored in memory. You can also edit the envelope manually by adding, deleting, or moving points in the graph. This is helpful sometimes when a certain portion of the sound doesn't drive the HDR window exactly as you would like it to. Finally, the active range property is used to determine the region of interest for a sound. For example, during a loud explosion, you would like to get the transient part of the audio file to drive the HDR window, but not necessarily the decay portion. With the active range property, you can specify the range in decibels for which the HDR dynamics is active. This graphic shows an example of a sound with an active range set to 7 dB. The red line shows the section where the sound drives the HDR window, and the green line shows the release time set on the HDR bus. At this point, you now have a complete understanding of how HDR audio operates in WISE. The last portion of the video integrates the HDR audio system with all other volumes in the standard WISE voice pipeline. As previously mentioned, the HDR system works with logical volumes and ignores the actual amplitude of the source audio files. These volumes are the sum of volumes from the actor mixer hierarchy objects, volumes from buses without effects, auxiliary send volumes, RTPC states and event actions volumes, distance attenuation, occlusion, obstruction, and various API functions. At each audio frame, the sound engine begins by computing the volume of all voices as seen by the HDR bus. It then executes the HDR system's logic, which returns a global HDR gain attenuation according to the position of the HDR window. 
This gain is then reapplied to each voice and WISE runs the standard volume evaluation against the project's volume threshold to decide which voices should be killed or virtualized. Two volume properties are ignored by the HDR system, the source loudness normalization and the makeup gain. These volume controls are primarily used to normalize the audio assets independently of their logical volume. Both controls are located in the Source Settings tab of the Property Editor. A considerable advantage of using the loudness normalization is that any sound set at the same volume will sound equally loud when normalized, which greatly simplifies the mix process of setting voices louder or quieter than others. Also, note that the loudness normalization analysis done by WISE is non-destructive and is only stored as a volume offset. The makeup gain is also useful to set a sound louder or quieter without affecting the logical volume considered by the HDR gain computation. For example, a sound could drive the HDR window up by a certain amount, which has an impact on the volume attenuation of all quieter sounds, and then use the makeup gain to mix this sound louder or softer without affecting the ducking values applied on all other sounds. Distance attenuation curves can be designed as usual, but be aware that there is a somewhat unexpected behavior caused by the HDR system. As you may remember, the loudest sound playing above the HDR threshold is played at 0 dBFS. If this sound is moving away from the listener but remains the loudest sound above threshold, you may be left with the impression that the attenuation curve does not work. Here's an example where the loudest sound is steadily moving away from the listener. While the volume seems correct on the input side, the output exhibits a plateau where the loud sound remains above the HDR threshold in spite of the increasing distance. This may give a false impression that distance attenuation is not working. In fact, at a closer distance, the volume offset exceeding the threshold affects the lower sounds instead of itself. If you find this effect undesirable, you may favor distance attenuation curves, as represented here, that decay rapidly over distance for your louder sounds. This concludes this overview on HDR audio in WISE. Thank you for watching, and we hope this system will prove to be beneficial for your projects.